Good morning, Hi. everyone. Oh, sorry, Elizabeth. Go ahead. <laughs> good morning or good afternoon. We may have guests from all over the world today. You sure might. Yeah. Uh, welcome to this webinar on uh, the FME community and a um, bit of education, a bit of entertainment. And uh, who knows, Dale might even break out into a song for us. <laughs> <laughs> I've been practicing all morning, Mark. Excellent. Wouldn't be the first time. I see we have at least some folks from places where country music is popular, so I, I, they will at least know what I'm going to try to attempt. Ah, Apologies to our friends from Europe in, in advance. <laughs> That's okay. I've got the cultural references for Europe. You can uh, you can have the North American ones, and uh, we'll we'll be good. It, it is exciting to be celebrating the community. It's been a huge part of um, of the FME user experience for a very very long time. And I'm going to I'm going to make a few references and jokes when the time is appropriate. But it's uh, it's been a wonderful wonderful aspect of of the ride. It has. It's been great. And that's um, one of the reasons we're talking about it today, is, I think, is just because we've all been so locked down over the last couple of years and we've not had the world tour or the user conferences we planned. And so, um, yeah, we need a bit of outreach, I think. Yes. This is it. So, well, then let's, shall we start, uh, officially start? Um, so, yeah, welcome to this webinar on the FME community and all of the fun and games that will be going on. Um, my name is Mark Island. Oh, I meant to change my title, but I, I'm the FME evangelist is what I'm generally known as. That's just my official uh, title within SAFE. And uh, my co-presenter today is uh, Dale Lutz. Say hi, Dale. Yeah. Hello, I'm one of the two co-founders, and Mark, I suspect that we couldn't find a salary grid for FME Evangelist when we did the salary I know. Survey. <laughs> I know. I, I don't know what technical evangelists uh, earn in the real world, but um, <laughs> it might have been why it was hard to find. And Elizabeth, you're our webinar organizer now. That's right. Yeah, very excited to be joining you guys today. I'll Excellent. be on the back end helping with any moderation. And uh, we also have Jenna and Sienna joining us on the Q&A panel today. In case you guys have any questions, you can chat them in there. Yeah, please do, please do chat any thoughts out, any questions, any comments. We'd love to hear what you think about the community. We did just do a recent survey on it, so uh, we got a lot of info from that. But uh, yeah, any feedback and Jenna and Sienna are there for us. Um, so let's have a quick look at the agenda for today. We're going to do an overview of the FME community. We'll try and make it fairly quick. I won't let Dale go off like it was 20 years ago today. And, and so on. I do well, have a 15. I have to, do we have time for my 15 minute history of the FME community, Mark? Uh, probably not. No, we'll, do, we'll okay. just go, go, with, <clears throat> go with what we are today. And we'll <laughs> do what's coming up next and some of the programs we're going to be trying out. Um, we'll also look at a few things about what's new. Um, one of the events that we're, we're working on is this thing I'm calling Community Connections, and we've got a, a big uh, event coming up in November, so we'll, we'll let you know about that as well. And then we're going to try this new thing, Dale and I, called Random Acts of Transformation. It's sort of education and information, and um, we are going to pick a transformer completely at random and try and well, talk about it at least, and if we can, we'll do a demo of it as well. Uh, depends what it is that comes up, but it could be anything. So, um, yeah, I know, I know, Dale. Well, I know you should be okay. I know Elizabeth was sweating when you weren't online until the last couple of minutes, and <laughs> thought you might have to take over. <laughs> starting to study up transformers. Yeah, yeah, it's never too late to start, Elizabeth. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. And then we'll we'll do a little bit of a, a game called GeoGuessr, which is again one of the things I've been using to try and reach out to our community and get people talking with each other, just like you might online. So we'll do that at the end. But if you want to sign up for GeoGuessr, you can do that pretty much now. If you go to geoguessr.com, you can sign up for a free account. If you look me up, my username on there is Manitoba Mark. If you add me as a friend, so anyone who's added me as a friend, I will, I will later on this morning, I will add you to the safe group and uh, then we can start playing uh, different games together and it'll be free and at least until the end of the month. 
for you to play GeoGuessr. So um, yeah, but we'll do some of that later on. But if you want to sign up now, that's uh, that's how you do it. It's just a couple of minutes, I think. I just you haven't uh, figured out how to tie. Oh, go ahead, Elizabeth. I was just going to say I chatted out the link for easy access there as well. Fantastic. And we we did have a practice yesterday, and it was it was very fun. I think the three of us enjoyed that. So it's uh, I, I, it's not really F me related, but I, I think it's spatial, and most of us are spatial people. So. so the way I wanted to cover the uh, the FME community and what it is and what it's about is comparing it to the user conference because we have this saying that we like to think of the FME community as being like a 24-7 worldwide user conference. Like anything you can do at a conference, you should be able to do the rest of the year in our community online. For example, we do training in the conference and we have training on the community as well. We have the FME Academy which is a fantastic thing. You know, earn badges, learn about different parts of FME. It's all split up into different sections, uh, nice bite-sized pieces. And uh, we, of course, we have the knowledge base. If you don't want to take a full training course or even a module, you can look at the knowledge base and try and find a particular tutorial or just answer to a particular question. And of course, when it comes to answering questions, we have the doctor's office at the user conference. Uh, where you can talk to our staff, while you can do the same thing online here. Uh, we have a technical Q&A forums on our community. And again, there's a knowledge base. So the Q&A forums are pretty good. You can ask a question there and either someone from SAFE will answer or another member of the community will answer. And uh, like most places, you earn reputation points and um, badges and that sort of thing. So. I think the doctor's office is one of the big highlights at the, uh, at the user conference. I think everyone visits there. Yeah. It's certainly one of my favorites anyway. I don't know about you, Dale. Yeah, it's, and you know, I, I know I don't want to go on about history, but that was our Swedish friends at the very first FME gathering had that concept. I think it comes actually from Esri long ago. Oh, okay. And uh, it was a hit there and we copied that. And uh, it's, it's all, I know that actually our, our technical staff love it as well to interact face-to-face mm -hmm. -face with users. And, um, yeah. and so that's why many of them do jump in on the, on the community as well. That's right, yeah. Um, it's a fantastic uh, way to get to know people uh, who, who use FME. Uh, the other thing we have at the user conference is an ideas board where you can jot down ideas of what you think we should do next with FME. And we have the same thing on our FME community as well. You can post an idea, you can look at other people's ideas, you can vote them up and down. And I mean, it being all virtual, it's it's really easy to do that. And we change the status. There's about, I don't know how many pages, like 20 pages or more of different ideas that have been actually implemented in the product. There's another couple of pages that are in beta right now. So um, we do, I mean, that's Dale's area more than mine, but yeah. I, I know we definitely look at what's going on on those boards and uh, take that into account in our planning. Yeah, over the past couple of years, especially, we've hired some folks whose one of their parts of their job is to really watch that, the product managers, and implement, figure out the, the trends there and get to the root of what the customer problems were that are trying to be solved and act on them. So please do, don't hesitate to be active in there, um, vote things up. It does, it does get looked at and it does influence where the product goes. Absolutely. Um, the other thing we do at the conference, if you haven't attended, we have this idea of birds of a feather. Um, basically, it just means we we have a theme for the, each table at lunch, and you can sit around with like-minded people, whether you're a CAD person or a uh, GIS or you're into 3D data or whatever. And we have user groups, and that's still under development, and I, I still I'm not totally happy with where it is on the... Uh, on the community, but we'll sort that out in the next couple of months, I hope, and uh, then we'll get some user groups up. And we hope to have local user groups as well, uh, have a spot on the community for, for them. So um, keep an eye out for that, and hopefully that will be uh, coming soon. And there's games and prizes at the user conference, because you can't, as we like to say, you can't learn things while you're asleep. So we like to make it a little bit fun, at least, and reward you for paying attention and that's what we do on the community as well and you'll see that this morning that we're going to do a couple of games that are 
fun, entertaining, but educational as well, because that's really what we're here to do is you want to advance your skills in FME and um, that's what we want as well. So um, we just think games and prizes are a good way to, uh, to, to do that, to keep us awake while we're doing that. I mean, a couple of things we do have at the conference that we don't yet have on the community. We have user presentations, we have social events and networking. And this really is one of the um, things that I want to get going on the community. And it's going to be uh, in our plans for the next uh, few months at least. Uh, we'll try and get some users to present online. We'll try and get some social events and networking together, like the GeoGuess. So really, and that's a social event where people can meet each other. And, uh, so on yeah you might say mark the sun never sets in the fme community that's right yes uh it's I, i'm just chatting out the link because i just realized we didn't put a link to the uh, community uh on this slide so community.safe.com that will get you there if you're not already a member you should definitely go and sign up you can still access some of the uh functions even if you don't sign up but you can't ask questions or vote or things like that so it's always a good idea to sign up. And you don't get the free food that you get at the conference, but hey, can't deliver pizza online, I'm afraid. We do better than pizza, Mark. Oh, well, that's true, yes, uh, we, we do. We have very uh, fantastic uh, food at the conference. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking about, we have the hackathon night and we do- uh, Oh, that's true. We do uh, that sort of pizza and beer and we sit around and, uh, do some fun projects and yeah we again we try and do that on the community um the one of the things we wanted to just put in here was to mention because we talk about swag and we do have swag on the uh for the community we have this idea of fme trading cards uh, each different card represents a different transformer and it's also tied to a particular sport so it's sort of like the baseball card collections if you like um, you can buy these online. There's a link uh, online that you can go to and, and buy them. But we're hoping to give them away uh, as prizes and, and, and gifts. Uh, and these guys on the right-hand side of this slide, uh, down in New Zealand, they got a couple of packs of these cards, and then they did this fancy little video online where they talked about them and the different transformers that were on them and explained what the transformers did. Actually, I think Hamish described the Transformer and the other two guys had to try and guess which Transformer they were, he was talking about. Which, uh, but that was just a great example of community um, content, if you like. So they put that out there online, it gets them known, and we shared that a lot because it's the perfect thing that we like to see uh, happening in our community. So uh, all power so Mark, to those you, guys. You mentioned that there's a rookie card in this latest set, and I see it's on the screen even. Oh, yes, um, although it's got the number one on it. I think that picture was a bit, I've, I've got that one here and it should actually be an R. I don't know if you can see that on there, it should be an R. Oh, it's yes. The number one. So yes. it's R for rookie. Number one is a tester. So, um, so yeah, I've got a pack of the cards there and they're, they're, they're good quality. It's not like they're cheap. It's not like we're making money out of these either, by the way. That's the <laughs> lowest price I can get them uh, on that site. So. Um, yeah. Do they come with gum? Do they come with some of that fine chewing gum that I grew up with? They don't, I'm afraid. We could have, okay. uh, I don't know if we can do that or not. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it. probably it okay. Be possible. Yeah, it's, it's probably okay without, yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you get a random card. There's 20 to collect, I think, or something like that. And you get six in a pack. So Yeah. But really, I, again, I just wanted to mention that as a reward that we give out quite often. and. Um, as an example of the community of those guys uh, doing that demo. Um, we did a, do a community survey recently, and thank you to everyone who saw that link and uh, participated. I just wanted to give you a little bit of feedback from that, just so you know that we're looking at the numbers and uh, we're, we'll share them with you as well, and we'll try and improve on them. So we got 98 responses, and on a scale of one to five, um, do forum questions get a useful answer? Well, that was a four out of five. So generally, I guess the questions that get asked on the forum do get useful answers. 
maybe they could be a little bit quicker, but I, I'm sort of loath to criticize that because half of the responses are definitely from other users and I'm not gonna complain about users answering questions at all. So, um, so uh, that, but we, we can perhaps look at that and uh, make sure no one's question gets uh, left behind as it were. This one, this we can definitely look at this. This is definitely on our, our side of the, uh, of the border. Um, does the search tool return good results? Okay, so let's have a look and uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do uh, to improve that. Um, I asked a couple of questions that uh, might have seemed a bit odd, but um, <clears throat> I just wanted this information. Like, would users be willing to use their FME skills to help a good cause? And 95% of the respondents said, yes, they do that. So uh, if we could find a way for you to contribute to good causes and using FME, we will certainly uh, put that out there. If 95% would consider at least doing that, then we, we should really try to find a project that we can set up and have people contribute to. But interestingly, uh, something like 43% of people already had used their FME skills to help a nonprofit. And um, sometimes the nonprofits can get their own license. That's a free license. Sometimes I guess people use their home license to uh, help a nonprofit out. I don't think that's a, a problem. Is it Dale using no, your home no. license for that? No. Sort of thing, no. yeah, I figured. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if we don't come up with something, I'm sure you can find a local organization that could use some uh, help with data integration and uh, that sort of thing. And so, yeah, please do. So, yeah, so that's a community survey that we did and we'll, we'll, we'll study that in more detail and try and uh, make sure that next this time next year we can say, oh, we've improved some of the things that uh, didn't look so good. And one other thing was uh, people getting recognized as well in the community. And recently we implemented this top 100 uh, reputation table, which we was sadly lacking uh, recently. So um, you can see the top reputation leaders, but the, the numbers go down quite a lot as you get further down the list. So it's not too difficult to, uh, to start answering questions, asking questions, earning reputation and working your way up the list from uh, uh, from a viewer to an evangelist to a celebrity, VIP, headline, dignitary, and uh, I think superstar is the final level, but no one's got there yet. <laughs> and I just want to thank all those that are on this list and all of you that do contribute because it it is so wonderful to get other insights and ideas and expertise being shared like this, so deeply appreciated. It is, absolutely. And one of the things we're, we're going to do is we have a Community Appreciation Day, and that will be sometime next week. Uh, it's normally the end of October, where we sort of do a, sometimes it's a blog post, sometimes it's on social media, but we'll try and um, pick out some of the people we really think have been contributing over the last year, and uh, maybe send out some uh, swag and prizes to them. So uh, just as a thank you. Um, and yet, and the other idea is that you can recognize each other now by giving people a badge. So if somebody's gone above and beyond uh, in their help for you, uh, and they're another member of the community, you can click on their profile, click the give badge button, and give them a community award and give them a message that says why they're so wonderful. And if you feel they've really, really, really gone the extra mile you can let us know at safe and let me know and uh, maybe we can send a little something out to them as a thank you for being so uh, fantastic but yeah please do uh recognize each other when you're when you're receiving help to some of your questions because i know it really uh, uh people really enjoy being recognized for the expertise that they can give so uh, please do uh let them know you appreciated their help and unlike on Reddit and places like that, it doesn't cost you to give a badge. You just click the give button and there you go. They get an award. So. And the other thing we're doing now as well for a bit of recognition for attending webinars is we are giving out webinar badges. Have we done this before for a couple of webinars yet, uh, Elizabeth? Sorry, we I'm have, cutting yeah. you on. We have, no. excellent. Very exciting. So, 
So yeah, so you um, we give you a webinar code sometime during the webinar, and you can go to fme.ly slash webinar badge, type in your community username, type in the webinar code, and you get a badge on the community. And we'll see who can gather the most badges, I guess, in, in a year. Um, the code for this webinar, SLBAC. So if you go to that site, type in your username on the community, not your email address, your actual username, type in the code, you'll get a badge applied to your account. So um, I did yeah. notice in the Q&A already, someone asked if there's a way to just register for all the webinars that are coming up. And so wow. that, that's kind of an interesting idea that we should look at mm -hmm. because I know there's a, there's some of you that love to be on top of everything. Of course, if you don't show up, there's no, no problem, but you could be yeah. registered and get the correspondence. So I think that's a, a good idea that we should like look that. into. Yeah. Yeah, oh, just automatically to sign people up. <laughs> Sorry, Elizabeth, you were about to. I was going to say, we'll have thing. to take a look at that. It's an interesting idea. We'll have to see what we yeah. can do there. That's pretty cool. So, anyway, so to move on to the important part, um, well, I think it is most exciting for me, anyway, is what we're going to be doing with the community in the near future and, well, in the continuing future. Um, like I said, we want to try and do more of this sort of social activities together try and get people sort of talking to each other a bit more connecting a bit more just because that's what you can do at the conference and it leads to great relationships between fme users and you can learn a lot from each other and it's it's been a bit lacking since we haven't been able to get together in person recently so one of the things we're going to do is what we call weekly wins I had to come up with different names for all of these sort of ideas and I've gone very alliterative on them. So weekly wins is the first one. And we'll do a poll every Monday, just just a fun thing to give your feedback on something about FME or similar. We do the What's Up Wednesday, which is a newsletter that we put out every week, just with the latest information about what's going on uh, in the world of FME, what new releases we have, that sort of thing. And then on Friday, sometimes when I find time for it, we do a question of the week, uh, which who's done the best question that week on the community? And we do a little bit of a write up and give them an award. Uh, the poll we did this week was uh, which transformer would you like to see us create that begins with the letter Z or Z <laughs> if you're American? Uh, maybe that will cause a lot of controversy. Excuse me. A lot of people are asking for a, a zip transformer to zip things up, zip files up, um, which you can do in the readers and writers already, but maybe a transformer would be a good idea. So, uh, well. In yeah. general, I mean, I'd be interested in the audience's um, input here that I, I wonder if we, we do kind of miss transformers that manipulate files. So I know that I've had to go into Python to delete files or rename them. So yes. zipping would be kind of a cousin of that. So file manipulation, zipping, is this something that we should um, do as primitives? Because you know what, Mark, that's a lot easier than spatial overlay. And, and <laughs> it is, this... yes. Uh, especially since the zip functionality must be built into FME already yes. to do it in the reason. It totally is. So yeah. But yeah, if you want to put into the question panel, uh, if you think that file manipulation would be a good thing, uh, that would give us an idea if that would be. I don't even know if there's an idea for that in the in the community, but there that would isn't, be which I was surprised at. So unless someone's yeah. added it since yesterday, then uh, no, there wasn't. So um, yeah. Yeah. Um what were the other ones that came up? Oh um Zodiac uh merger i think it was it was like you you take a date you find what star sign it is and then give a horoscope for that record which uh would just be funny uh, yeah like this record uh it's a good week for this record to travel a long distance but it uh, shouldn't buy a lottery ticket and that sort of thing. that'd be funny uh the other thing that came up yesterday three people suggested a i can't remember what they called it but it was like a Starbucks or a, I can't remember what the other ones were, but it was basically a, a transformer that tells you it's time to actually take a break from doing all your work. So uh, maybe we should look at that. You, you've had 10 uh, million records go past in the log, it's time to take a break, that sort of thing. So. I was thinking, Mark, a Zapier caller. 
which would call yeah. out to that web service Zapier. That would that's the best I could come up with. Or a yeah, Zapier connect. Wonder about that. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, so that that was just a fun. But again, it gives us a bit of feedback. It helps people connect. So it's it's great. And we'll do some random events as well. We'll do a bit of live streaming. I'm on Twitch and I'm on YouTube. Uh, you can find me uh, under Twitch under Manitoba Mark again. And YouTube, I'm not quite sure what my username is there, but um, we hope, I hopefully, if if our random X transformation goes well today, we'll we'll just do it at random times as well. And it it it's information. It's nice video about Transformer, but you can watch it live as well and uh, see the presenters squirm. Um, well, I'll maybe throw out FME challenges at random. We may do guest presenters as well. Uh, all of those sorts of things. But the two key sort of outreach events I want to talk about was this idea of mid-month missions, which again, I'm doing in my alliterative way. So that one's gonna be a monthly event that just takes place sometime in the middle of the month, like this webinar. We're talking about community and um, yeah, and we're, we're gonna do these couple of things, activities as well. In November, I'll do an FME quiz sometime in the middle of the month. And December, I've not quite, decided yet what we should do um i was thinking maybe we could do like a movie watch party watch your favorite christmas movie online or something that would just be a purely social event but we we can see just sort of a couple of hours in the middle of the month to sort of get together and uh maybe discuss fme and uh, whatnot so that's the mid-month missions and the other one is the community connections um october we're doing geogasser so these are events that last for the entire month, but you don't have to take part for the entire month. You can just sort of dip in and out whenever you uh, you want to take part. So we're doing GeoGuessr for October, so you can sign up for an account. Um, we'll we'll add you to the safe uh, group, which gets you free access, and then you can play GeoGuessr for the month against each other. Uh, in December, we'll have the 12 days of FME, which is our, our traditional uh, holiday. Uh, event and in November next month what I would like to do is a community postcard exchange because we were talking about how do we get people to connect to each other well that seemed a fantastic idea a way of doing that and yes I shamelessly stole the idea from Reddit but it's still a good idea anyway so what you do is you, it's open now. You can submit your name and your contact information. Uh, and we'll, we'll keep taking that info up until about mid-November. Then I've got a workspace that'll run and a run through our database and match everyone together. And basically you get a name of another FME user or maybe even someone from SAFE. And you send them a postcard or a holiday card or a greetings card or anything that you like. Um, and I figure it's a good way to get people to connect from different countries. And I can send a postcard with a picture of a moose on it to someone in uh, in France, and they can send a card to Australia with a picture of something from France on it, and, and, and so on, just to help us connect together. And we can do yep. you can do up. Sorry, Dale, were you about You know, you know, Mark, there were the first marketing run we ever did, there was space on the brochure printout thing, and so we made postcards. There oh, were fantastic. FME postcards made in about 1996 or five, and I don't know if anybody has them. We used to try to give them away at, at uh, trade shows. People pick them up and look at them and put them back down. But anyway, <laughs> uh, that would be kind of funny if anybody has any of those old uh, FME postcards. I might see, I don't think I do actually, um, but it would I be see. fun. I seem to remember there were stacks of hundreds of them in the uh, stationery cover for quite a few years. So. <laughs> yes, there were. They don't know if they survived the move. People yeah. used to use them for monitor stands and stuff like that. They were uh, right. Yes, they did that with training manuals as well, which yeah uh, was was good. It's good use for them. Uh, yeah, so you can send up to three cards, and basically you'll receive up to three cards in return. And when you receive a card in return, we encourage you to sort of tweet about it or post it on social media, use the hashtag uh, FME community, and then we can see where you've got a card from, and we can, maybe we could even create a map of where the cards Ooh. have uh, traveled from and to. That would be uh, pretty cool. 
a small FME server app. But just yeah. to be very clear, Mark, this is this is not any kind of pyramid scheme. Like you don't need to send it to five people when it you get is one. Not, no, no, <laughs> not at all. Um, it's just, and it should be fairly cheap. I mean, what's the postage for a postcard? It should be pretty minimal. So, yeah. And that's the uh, URL. So oh, wow. Um, please do have at it. Let me know if it doesn't work. Um, I'm sure it will, but um, <laughs> you always you always want to make sure. So uh, yeah, do let me know if there's any problems. Uh, yeah, and in mid-November, like I said, we'll match everybody up and uh, you can get up to three names that you can send to. And uh, yeah, we'll include safers as well. So you can sort of communicate with the developers or the support staff or anybody, in fact, and uh, get a card back from them. Yeah. So, I, I, I don't know how many folks are uh, Blue's Clues fans, but I'm just thinking of that we just got a letter thing, Mark. Do you, do you even know what I'm talking about? But... I vaguely know what you're talking about, yes. but um... Any Blue's Clues fans listening in? There's got to be, or at least people who, like, if you're like me, your kids watched it, but there would be young enough ones that will have been first timers. I saw, I think it was the 30th anniversary or something of Blue's Clues just recently. Oh, really? Yeah, some wow. sort of milestone, yeah. Huh, amazing. So yeah, so that's our um, community uh, connection for uh, November. So yes, it's open now, but we'll we'll close it down in mid-November, and that's when we can start swapping cards over. And uh, yeah. Okay, Dale, are you ready? Whoo! Whoo! Like there was people. This there is... were people baiting us on Twitter this morning, hoping to see a live demonstration of the XML updater or some awful thing like that. The X so... Query Transformer. Yeah. Ooh, that would be. Pretty brutal, but I, I guess if it goes well and we work our way through all the transformers, it's going to happen. <laughs> so what happens is this: um, I like I like to call this the de dictionary definition of infotainment because it's going to be entertaining to watch us squirm, but hopefully educational, informational as well to learn about transformers. And I figure that we can throw some things in there that you really might not know about the history of the transformer and maybe what some of the settings are. And if we can demo it, we We'll do that as well. So that's what we do. We pick a transformer at random. We'll try and demonstrate it. We'll tell you all we know about it. And you learn. How do we decide? How is it going to be random selection? Well, we are going to let the marbles decide. Um, we have a marbles app. And <laughs> we are going to use that to pick which transformer is selected. So I don't know how well this will appear on the stream, but I've got this marble uh, app. Let me see, which one was I going to use? Multi-lane madness. Okay, so we're going to start out with 528 marbles. <laughs> Some of these I suspect might be aliases and not real transformers, because I don't think we've got quite that many. But yes, yeah, so let's do a contest. Um, I know some of these marbles won't reach the finish because it's there's one of these tracks where marbles fly off at different angles and they don't always make it down the, uh, the track to the finish. So if you want to type into the question panel or chat window, whichever it is for you, how many marbles you think will finish out of 528? And the one the person who gets closest, we will give you a prize. Just an off the cuff contest there. So. Yeah, so some of those transformers are going to fly off the uh, the track. How many do you think will finish out of 528? And I suspect there'll be quite a few that fall off this track, but there'll be quite a few that finish as well. So, um, okay. Wow, it's crowded. So there are all those marbles there. It is. It's it's quite fun watching. Is I hope I hope you get the really get the good effect on the, on the stream, but I suspect it might be a little bit jerky. But um, we shall see. Everyone guesses. Everyone's got a guess in. Okay. Well, I'm going to hit the start button now. Of course, the most important is not how many marbles finishes, but which one finishes first. Oof. And right now, it's the attribute splitter. It's taking a leap <laughs> into space and wow, all these other like... ones are just flying off the edge. I'm not sure. There's the attribute range mapper. Oh, this is just going to be so 
see you're probably a little bit behind on on the display it's the attribute rounders in the lead now rounding the corner uh, oh the angularity calculator it's shot into the lead oh man this is just i don't even know what's lead uh oh xml appender was that rasta tyler <laughs> What are we going to so have? So here's where I can sing for you, Mark. Now the race is on, and here comes pride up the back stretch. Heartaches going to the inside. My oh. tears are holding back. They're trying not to fall. <laughs> My heart's out of the running. True love scratched for another's sake. The race is on, and it looks like heartache. Whoop, heartache. And the winner lo loses Ooh. all. And what happened, Mark? I think the XML one must have flown off the oh no it's That's in the good. lead again <laughs> we might be in trouble now it's still going around in circles in a bizarre xml way xml appender yeah i think that one's going to win no oh yes it did it just made it no. front of the feature merger. oh <laughs> that oh dear so there's uh -oh. your finish uh oh no xml is not rigged somebody's asking that in the question and if it was don with us today then yes i would agree it was rigged but uh, i think dale and i were hoping for a non-xml transformer all right it's time to start can we call Hello. a friend let's see if dean is in manitoba he should be able to tell us <laughs> that's true i don't know if dean's online let's just let it finish and see how many transformers did finish it looks i'm gonna like reach out to dean <laughs> Three hundred and fifty-five right now. Three hundred and fifty-five transformers look like it's uh, marbles. Looks like it's going to finish. So um, I think that's going to be the number. Did anyone pick three fifty-five? Oh, somebody picked three fifty-four. That was pretty good going. So um, I think that's probably going to be the nearest. But yeah. So yes, there's the winner, the XML appender, and. Followed by the feature merger and the center line replacer, which I think we would have preferred, but that's okay. We can do XML. Feature merger would have been easy to talk about. It would. It would have been a good one as well, but that's okay. So, yes, Elizabeth, you want to see who came closest to 355 and let us know? Yes. But in the meantime, do I have FME fired up? I will now. XML Appender, what does it even do? Marbles have chosen. We are going to look at that and we are going to tell you everything we know about this transformer, which may not be Ooh. a lot. Oh, assemble several XML documents into one. So one accepts a single XML document and the other one accepts XML fragments. So in that way, every incoming fragment is appended to the end of the main XML document. Whew. Interesting. <laughs> Okay, Mark, on the popularity, if you go to safe.com slash transformers and check this one out, it's number 415 out of 500. So it's, uh, <laughs> so it's not the most popular, got... but it's... Sorry, Dale, you were... I just say Dean is there. So let's see if he uh, can help us out. Um, okay. So I, I... Well, let's have a look at some of the uh, settings. So we the document comes in. And I assume that document can come from an attribute or an XML file. So we can read an XML file. Let's see if I've got one online somewhere. In, uh, I must have some somewhere. Oh, I know. I've got some metadata. There we go. I've got three XML files. So I can read that one. And you get to choose how the fragments are attached do they become children or siblings um, i would think if i'm going to merge three different xml files together they would be siblings and the append path in the document do we know what that does let's click the help button i'm sorry we it's one of those transformers that i guess we we're not too up on uh, nor is i wonder if anybody on this call has ever used it so well, that's if, question, if there's it? any we can ask the audience isn't that a thing you typically are able to do in these sorts of situations document 
and path in die. Okay, so. Okay. That's probably so, where you want to insert it into. Yes, yeah. that's what I'm thinking. Now, I wonder if this lets you browse for it inside that file. No, it doesn't. See, sometimes you can do that. Sometimes you can browse through uh, that. Yes. I'm just going to pick another XML file, the medium one. I'm going to click OK just to, because um, what I want to do is, can we open the file? directory no that should let you do that we should have that on the pop-up i think but that's just me um, let me see so we had that one let's inspect that with the fme data inspector and it is plain xml now, do we have to define the schema for this? <laughs> you can tell we are not XML. In fact, I'm not even sure that's going to read until we give it a yeah, we, we're gonna... document. Oh, that's that's an Esri um, uh, metadata XML file. It is, yes. Now, do I have a, a schema document in there as well? Not a chance. <laughs> Probably not. No, it's a shape file. So um, open file. We may have met our match here, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we might. Can we talk about oh, feature okay. merger? For example, feature mergers like like I should check how it is in the. Um... Okay. If folk would not mind, I think feature merger would be easier for us to do, and it will be a lot more educational <laughs> for you folks than us trying to stumble through that. Let's go for silver here today, Mark. Okay, we couldn't get the gold, but we'll go for the uh, feature merger. Centerline so, replacers had a lot of work over the years too, but uh, yes, but we'll do feature merger. Okay, so what can you tell me about the feature merger, Dale? It's number four in our transformer gallery. So we're going from one end to the other, tester, attribute manager, attribute creator, feature merger. But the big thing that it does is it brings two streams of data together and we, of, of interest to this group is that we tried a couple years ago to convince people that they should use the feature joiner instead yeah um, because that uses more sort of industry normal database terms of right and left inner and outer join and so on feature merger yeah. is a little bit more quirky um, but it but there's no stopping its popularity at this stage so what we've yeah. done is swing around and we've done a bunch of work to really improve the performance of feature merger i can't remember that must have been released in fme 2021 or do you know i um, think it was yes because we said yes. use the feature joiner it's way quicker but people just like the feature merger and to be honest i did as well it's, it's <laughs> you don't well, have who, to think quite as much you don't have to know sql to uh because what could be more clear than requesters and suppliers? But well, for, for those, you know, the, the history of this was that the underlying technology was invented so we could process E00 files for the old timers and ARC Info coverages, um, where the polygons would be the requesters and the suppliers were the various lines, and we could bring them together and then form polygons out of them. So it's, it was good for resolving one to many types of situations and, and actually even doing geometry manipulation in this case creating polygons out of lines but most people use it for just attribute joining so i have a csv file yes. i'm joining it to another csv often and i put them in there and configure it and off i go and if and if it's a one-to-one -one kind of join which is very very common then it'll it'll actually in modern fme be extremely fast um yes if, it, it's, if it's one to many then you're going to have a little bit, um, you know, then you've got to get into making lists, basically, which uh, then you might want to explode them afterwards or whatever. And in a rare case where you're actually trying to create geometry, you can use that too. So, yeah, and I'm, I'm just setting this up as another example, because one of the things you can do is merge all of the suppliers or, or this, a single supplier onto every one of those features as well. Instead of giving it a matching attribute, you can just say connect one to one, or uh, yes. it can be anything. You say B to B, as long as you get the same fixed value in, in, in there, then basically that supplier will get merged onto every requester. Which, the so called uh, unconditional feature match. Yes. And I find that very useful in. Um, in workspaces because you're you're doing something with some data down here 
and you want to attach it to this other data, or maybe it's even come out of this record in the first place and you process it in a way that destroys the original geometry and then you just pass the result back onto the original yes. rather than trying to yes. reconstruct that geometry. Yeah, so rejoining the streams is an often thing. Actually, there's been a couple yeah. people chime in in the discussion, Mark. Some folks saying that the SQL, if, if you're teaching FME or working with SQL people, they will like the feature joiner because that's yes. more natural to them. Um, yes, more, absolutely. I guess GISE people or longer time FMEers may find the terminology of the merger better. And Joanna yeah. points out that the feature joiner will only let you compare attributes to attributes. You can't execute functions and do constants like you're right. doing here. Yes. So this one's a bit more powerful in that respect. And that's yes, a really, can, yeah, good point. Yeah, we could do that. We could trim, we could trim the key in yes. case you've got um, you've got spaces on your keys and they don't match. You can trim them directly. Yes. You know, you know Joanna, I'm going to make a note of that one because we do have the technology. When Feature Joiner was written, it was one of the first ones to use our high high data high data volume. Um, infrastructure, but today we could actually solve this. Back then we couldn't. Anyway, yeah. very good. I mean, the other thing that the feature joiner does is it lets you do these outer joins where you keep, like, you keep all of the left, but you just attach all of the right that matches. Yes. Uh, and, and you can, okay, no, let me, let me phrase that another way. If you've got many to many joins, the feature joiner will create a feature per join. So if you've got 10 features on the left, 10 features on the right, and they both all, all join to each other, you can get up to 100 features coming out. Yes. Whereas in the feature merge, you would only ever get 10 features, yes. but you can have a list. So yeah. they, which, yeah. Which you can then explode or not, depending on what you're wanting to do. Yes. So I, I know that the whole list area of FME is a fascinating one, um, kind of an invention we came up with to deal with one-to-many type situations, but it can allow some creative ways to solve problems. Um, at the risk of a little bit heavier memory use and a little bit slower processing for now. Uh, top people at Safe Labs, uh, I'm kind of joking but not, are, have, a, have a plan in place to actually really improve the speed of list transformers. Uh, oh, it may not make it, it, pro it won't make it for FME 2022.0, but, um, but it is something that we're actively looking at, which will remove that kind of fear of using lists. So. Um, I'm well, sure there's great. some yeah. some on this in this call that like using lists, and you'll be happy about that. There's yeah. also some plans to be able to basically um, apply an operation bang to all the elements of a list as well. I think actually Joanna may have done a talk about that in the past. I'm thinking at uh, an FME UC, and we're looking to productize some of those ideas. Yeah, fantastic. One of the other things I've mentioned is the feature merger is taking two streams that are already in your workspace. So yes. If you've got a stream of data that you want to match to a database that already exists online, you don't need to read that database in. You can use a database joiner instead, which more or less does the same thing, except it calls out to a, uh, a database somewhere, like in PostGIS or whatever. And uh, yeah, so um, if you don't need to read the data in, the feature the database joiner is a, is a good alternative to that. You know, actually, Mark, um, shameless promotion of a previous webinar. I'm just going to chat it out. Mm -hmm. We did one that was more generally about um, merging and joining data. And mm -hmm. I think I just quickly looked at the table of contents. For higher end things, you can also use the inline courier. And right. while we're on this call, I'll mention to folks that the inline courier is getting a big overhaul in FME 2020. The, the guts of it are being redone. So it'll support bulk mode. 2021. Ah, 2022. 22. Ah, yes. <laughs> Which year are Never, we? <laughs> what, what year is it? It feels like it's still 2020. And nothing's yeah. really happened since then. But anyway, um, it's going to be uh, drastically faster. And we may end up getting some, some sweet spatial light support in there. So these queries would be able to do um, spatial operations as well. Yeah. So... The inline query just lets you do um, a SQL command of your own choosing. It's not even like embedded into parameters. It's like you can actually type in a SQL query uh, and you can bring lots of data together. And it's like having a database in there. Each input is like a different table and you can carry out a query uh, however you like. So uh, that's, a, that's another good one for SQL fans. Um, Feature merger. The other thing we can do with the feature merger, and I, 
and I like doing this, is you can use it for change detection. Yeah. Which I don't know if uh, people necessarily knew this, but what I'm going to do here is a very quick demo. I can't do spatial data, but we could do, I'm just going to sample a random selection of data. So we'll say every eighth feature will, we'll, we'll pick that out to do something with it. And I can put an attribute manager down. Let's see, we'll just alter the, uh, the tree count to increase it. So we'll say tree count plus one. So somebody's planted a tree in those parks. Um, so that's just our source data coming in, really. And we can, let's see, now how do we do this? We would have to match the park ID. Yes. And the tree uh, count. Yes. So yeah, we can do multiple matches and we're doing attributes only, but the only yeah. we'll ever test for attributes, it just, that's just saying, do you want to copy the geometry over as well? Um, process duplicate suppliers, no, because it should just be a one-to-one -one yeah. result, yeah. So now we should be able to run this and find that. There we yes. go, so 10 features, <clears throat> excuse me, so 70 features were merged, that means they're unchanged. 10 features didn't match, that means those are changed requesters. And these unused suppliers are the changed, changed suppliers, basically, these features. Yeah. So, um, I, I don't know, Dale, I mean, I always thought this was better than the change detector because it just seemed that little bit quicker, but um, maybe the change detectors... Uh... Actually, this this will this will run more quickly than the change detector will. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. And I do especially... Like yeah. Sorry, go on, you were saying? No, I, especially um, if it's uh, high data volumes coming in there because change yeah. detector doesn't do bulk mode this thing does, and I know that this thing builds okay. in modern FMEs a very fast index. Just this, it uses basically we took the brains of the feature joiner and popped it in under the feature merger, um, so it got it got an update. Fantastic. You know, Mark uh, Dan asks an interesting uh, question about the pros and cons of using a database joiner versus sucking the whole database in. And right. And uh, did you want to answer that? Because I've got a answer as well if uh... why don't you take a stab first and i'll uh okay so th the primary advantage is that every you don't have to read the entire database all at once so if you're matching 80 parks to a hundred thousand or a million records you don't have to read that million records in. you just say match this to that database table and you've got the optimize option which says okay well i can run a query to prefetch what i know uh, might be there, but every time you run this, it will cache a certain amount of data, not the FME caching with the green icons you see, just a different sort of cache. And so if something's matching more than once, it will, uh, it will do that. So I always thought that would be way quicker. Like if you had that million records, you were matching 80 things to, basically it would send off 80 queries to the database and you get your data back. But I found recently that's not always quicker um, because every time you're doing a, uh, a query, it's sending that off to the database. If it's a database that's online, like a post just one, you've got the internet to uh, travel across as well. And I found, yeah, I, I, I ran, a, ran an example and I found it took way, way longer on the database joiner compared to just reading the whole of the database table in in the first place. So that's. I've always it would be said a, it was quicker, but yeah, it would be a function of how many um, rows there are in that database. Yes. There is, Mark. I think I can't really see it with my bad eyes, but I think that there is a, a concept of a prefetch query down in this thing there too. There is, yes, and I'm trying to activate it, and I can't. I think you have to choose a database format, like it oh, only. Okay. So if you choose PostGIS up there or Postgres, okay, let's do then that. Then you should be able to do. Okay, so there then, we go. Yes. 
so so if Mark would have done select star from the table, that would basically pre-cache the whole table, and he should then be back in business. Yes. With a fast the fast one. The other thing I and I just did that there. Let's see if I can improve the uh, the font size a bit in this dialog. Um, select star from parks where city equals Vancouver. So you can always put a where clause on that as well, just to bring in data that you know will match. Yes. Like I know, no, none of these parks would match any other city because they're in Vancouver. So that's something you can do. So in the old days, um, the advantage of the database joiner is that it's not blocking, which means when you configure this, right. we will be ready to join to whatever we're going to point to. And then as data enters, as soon as one thing enters, it will leave immediately with its answer. So you don't have to wait yeah. until the end or anything. Whereas something like the feature merger kind of has to wait till everybody is in until it does its work. Yes. Um, so, so there can be some feature, uh, some some issues like that. If you're joining to a CSV or Excel file, that is equivalent to bringing it in um, separately because we will read the whole Excel. If it's a non-SQL based thing, we have to read the whole thing and kind of make our own structure. Um, yeah. So there's no uh, downside there right now the database joiner is not bulk mode happy which means in high data volume we kick down to traditional fme processing ironically just yesterday i was involved in writing up a plan for making it bulk bulk mode happy um, oh, okay excellent so it is on the the list soon so uh in the short term you're probably better off sucking stuff in and in, in yeah. into a feature merger or joiner so, but um anyway I mean, hopefully that gives me, you some ideas yeah for me it was the cost of sending Yep. Like query to the database and waiting for the result to come back. It, yep. it was just way longer. And because I've got a machine that's got, I don't know, 20, 30 gigabytes of memory on it, reading a million or two records was no hassle anyway. So it was quicker yep. just to read everything all at once, even though I knew it was going to match. So, you know, Mark, I, I see that we only have four minutes left and you and I could mm -hmm. talk about feature merger all day, but um, should we? <laughs> we could. Should we do a quick uh, round of GeoGuessr just to see what I that is? Probably and, should, yes. And uh, well, maybe we'll we'll say yes. Yeah. We'll say now that if people want to leave, then okay. I, hopefully you've you found this interesting, and hopefully the feature merger uh, information has been useful to you. Um, yeah, there's, there's all these things about processing duplicate suppliers in case you've got multiple matches, and uh, you can generate a list if that's the case, and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that was of use. If you would like to stay and um, check out the, I'm going to go back to the um, to the slides and just go to the thank you slide and say, if you have to leave now, okay, don't forget to sign up for the postcard exchange. Follow me on Twitch or YouTube for more content. Get your community badge for the webinar. Connect on LinkedIn. Sign up to the community website. Just, take part in the community wherever it is i like to think the community is more than just our website you can find things on reddit and on uh, linkedin is a very popular place for talking about fme which surprised me uh, a little bit but um, i guess we're professionals and that's more of a professional uh, forum than than something like reddit or, or whatever so um, yeah uh, but yes let's play geoguessr then to close us out for the day. Yeah. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to check. I got a whole bunch of friend requests. Wow. Accept, 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 accept. Everybody wants to be Mark's friend. Absolutely. I mean, you don't necessarily need to be my friend for me to do this, but it's just easier if I know, because <laughs> then I can add you to the safe team. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. That, that sounds about right. Add you to the group. So now we have a lot of people in our group, but still room for more if anybody knows anyone else who wants to sign up. So now you can play like GeoGuessr for free because normally it's like $5 a month. You can play it free till the end of uh, October. So uh, that's great. Um, Let's play a game. So what we're going to play is this thing called Battle Royale Distance. Um, what this means is we, 
we put this in. So, so GeoGuessr, in case you didn't know, is a game where it puts you down at a random position on Earth and it gives you a map and you have to click on the map and say where you think you are. And in this game, you have like two minutes to figure out where you are and click it on the map and whoever is furthest away from the real point gets knocked out. And then we go to the next round and uh, yeah. So let me um, post that link to the chat and hopefully, oh, I posted it as a question. There we go, it's in the chat now. So hopefully you can follow that link and join up to this game and uh, we'll see how many folk we get joined up. And you know, Mark, my heart is breaking, but I see that I had another, somebody put a meeting in my calendar oh. for right now. So I'm oh. gonna have to bid adieu and I will okay. not be able to take part, but uh, it's been, okay. been a slice and have fun geo-guessing everybody. Fantastic. And, you, and you've been on there, so you can come back anytime and uh, take yes. part with us as well. So. And I will leave meeting. without ending. I'll leave without yes. ending the meeting. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dale. <laughs> okay, see you all. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so we have a full game now. Um, obviously, you can see my screen, so it might be a good idea if you um, if you turn off the sound or uh, don't look at my screen, so uh, we can compete. But um, and if you haven't played before, well, we'll we'll do a few games, and you'll get used to uh, to that, I'm sure. So here we go. So the game starts in five, four, three, two, one. And we have to figure out where we are. So for anyone else watching, you can see what I can see. So some of the clues are which side of the road are they driving on? And we have the, the purple line at the top is a timer. So I would advise people to make a guess pretty early. Um, let's see, what do you think, Elizabeth? Do you think this looks? Well, I did see a palm tree in there. So yeah, that... what was that sign? Yeah. That... Via Malaysia. Oh, okay. Stati Unita. This sounds Eastern European to me. So I would, if I was folk, I would guess quickly because yeah. I think I'm going to go somewhere on the coast. Oh, I definitely so, didn't go from the coast, so we'll see. Well, I'm, it doesn't mean it is. I'm way out. So the four people who haven't guessed, oh. guess quick. Guess quick. Else you're going to be knocked out. Okay. So, um, oh, so some I made folk it. were knocked out. Excellent. And it was in the foot of Italy. So uh, well done to the folks who uh, got that. Next round starts in three seconds. And this looks like it's going to be interesting. Oh, wow. Oh, man. We're going mountaineering today. We are. Or is it just Antarctic exploring? Yeah, I see there's a sign is here. That, is that a map? Is that a sign? Is it going to be blurred out? Oh, it's pretty... Castle Rock. Oh, interesting. Root hazards. Ooh, I should know. Where's Castle Rock? I'm looking at the snowy parts on the map. <laughs> it could be a lot of places. I'm going to make a guess. Ooh, I don't like this. No, I just Ooh. went for it. Well, I'm not last, but the last couple of folks really need to guess quick. You have multiple guesses, by the way. So if you guess it wrong, you can always guess another time. Ooh. Oh, it was down Ooh. in Antarctica. Wow. It was we 18,000 well kilometers away. Oh. So... Oops. What have we got left? Five people left? Wow. Okay. Ooh. Okay, let's see what language these signs are in here. Yeah, that might help. Ooh. Ooh, interesting. Oh. Is that... Okay, well, that's not English. Oh, the road signs give a bit of a clue there. Oh, okay. Thank you for that, because I was thinking, is that in England? Yeah. Okay, beautiful church building. No, it's not England, because they're driving on the right side of the road. I'm going to guess this is in Europe somewhere. Oh, man, I don't like this. <laughs> 
Time to guess, folks. Oh, boy. Because the cut is coming up very shortly, and I'm going to be last. I'm going to make another guess quickly. Oh, oh I was knocked out. Oh, Ooh. it's in Germany. Germany. I guess Poland, I think. Okay, well, you're through. I'm out, so I'm going to spectate. Oh, no. All right. Wow, this looks interesting. Um, yes, if anyone hasn't... Beautiful mountains. I'm just going to check if anyone else has friended me. Who have we got? Tim and Anton. And let's see... Okay, this one's tough. I have no idea where we are. Didn't miss anyone off the group. Oh, I must have missed someone, did I? Oh, yes. I, I'm just clicking on everyone again just to make sure. Okay, there we go. I've, I think I've added everyone who uh, was missing. Sorry, let's. I'm going back to that now. Oh, yeah, nice uh, countryside. Yeah, some beautiful mountains. Oh. Oh. Where was it? oh. Good guess by Elizabeth there. Okay. Up in yeah. Norway. I guess some of our Scandinavian resellers aren't on today. Yes. Oh. Now, where are we? We're down to three. But I notice, Elizabeth, you've only got one guess left. The other people have got six guesses. Oh no! So you can, <laughs> I better you can make use it. A, yeah, you can use a quick guess early on just to get a rough position down, and then sort of refine it a bit. Oh Ooh, boy! I think I might know which country country this is. Or well, maybe I don't. Yeah, maybe I don't. You can also look, if you see websites listed on signs, it, uh, you can sometimes figure out which country it is. Oh, okay, I put in my one guess. Well, your second and, oh. wow, there we go. It was in Brazil. Brazil, yes. Wow. So did you get knocked out there, Elizabeth? You I did. did, yes. So, I'm not even going to say what my guess was. People can see okay. it there. Okay, <laughs> so we're down to the final two. This is the final. I, I, uh, I was going to say it looks Canadian, but to be honest, I look at a lot of things and think, oh, that looks Canadian, and then it turns out to be somewhere it's completely different. different. So I wouldn't... Yeah, this is not Canada, is it? That's a very cute taxi. So. That is. The hardest challenge is when you aren't allowed to move. You're just placed in a position and you aren't allowed to move. You aren't allowed to look around. You just see what you see. And um, good luck, basically. Oh, oh I, see a, I see a road sign that's in very interesting Let's say that's the road signs in UTF-8. Oh, Bulgaria. It was in Bulgaria. So let's right. see who won. Congratulations to Anton. Good win there. Second for Geomancer and third for Elizabeth. Oh, that's Shall cool. we play again? Yes, check the license plates. But the license plates very often um, blurred. blurred out. So yeah, you can't always see them. Okay, here's the link to the next game. And we'll see who gets to sign up. It's nice having 10 people play. Like yesterday, there was myself, Elizabeth, and Dale playing. And uh, yeah, I think it would be over fairly quick if uh, we didn't. Uh... Does any more want to uh, join us on this one? Oh, there was oh. graffiti saying Brazil on that, was there? So that oh. always helps if you can find uh, the graffiti or something like that. Yeah. Uh, oh, Sigtil's playing. Excellent. So, um, 
just a few more seconds in case any last couple of people want to join. Uh, and again, remember you do have multiple um, guesses if you want to make a quick guess, and then you earn more guesses the closer you are to it. So it's, uh, oh, we almost had one more for a second. Okay, there we oh, go. We got ten go. now. We're good. We're starting. Okay, good luck, everyone. Ooh, looks like we're driving on the right. Oh, wherever this is, it looks beautiful. Yeah. I've got a good idea what language it's speaking. Again, you can make a quick guess. Yeah. You start out with five guesses. See, this is going to make it interesting having people from all over the world and Europe, especially uh, playing, because yes, I suspect you will know a lot more positions. Than... Okay, I'm going to make a guess quick. Oh, wow. Okay. And the table shows you how far away you are from the previous person. So, hey, that was a good guess. Wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh. I was only 22 kilometers away. Wow. It's in Austria. Austria. I, was, I could see German speaking signs and I was thinking. Same. Yeah, I just plunked to my. Head in yeah. Germany, hope for the best. Yes, I was yesterday. It, I was puzzled as to whether it should be Germany or Austria, and it turned out to be Switzerland. So, um, okay, my rule is when you're in the middle of the country, go downhill. Yes, that's my uh, general rule because I figure it must be going somewhere. Oh, there's a sign here. There is. I don't know how much it helps me though. Oh, district council. Oh, is that a flag on there or is it just a picture of a hut? It does look a little like a flag. Oh, and it's in English. Yes. This could be very interesting. Oh, I better oh, put I in. Oh, I should make a guess. I'm going to make yeah. a quick guess. Oh, I'm a little oh. bit closer, but. I'm going to make a second guess. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh. <laughs> South Africa. Wow. Oh, wow. So somebody was knocked out. I'm not sure who. I. Yes, that was a tough one. That really was. I survived the round, I think. Yeah, surviving was is right. That was a real tough one. Um, okay. Let's head towards the buildings and see where we end up. Oh, that is definitely not English. Uh, I can't find. I thought it was a sign there a second ago. I've lost it. Ooh. Well, this is a hard one. Ooh, that looks. I wonder if Dean's watching because I think this might be sort of his area. Yes. No. Ooh, two left. Fog Donkey and Tim. Oh man, I think I'm in trouble now. I'm gonna make a second guess. Oh boy, I made three guesses. <clears throat> wow, that was oh in Lithuania. Very, very well oh. done there to uh Sigi, I think was the closest. Wow. That was tough. That definitely was a survived. Yes. Ooh, I think I might know which country this is. I'm almost definite I know which country it is. Oh, I think I know what you're thinking there, Mert. The problem is, if it is, it's a big country and. Yes. Oh, I haven't guessed ooh, yet at all. Ooh, 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 ooh. It really goes by fast. There we go. Yes, guess quick, folks, uh, I would say. I saw a sign. 
and it didn't tell me where exactly, but it told me enough. Oh, Yay, I got through. Right. It was the east coast of Australia. I saw, wow. I saw a sign that said the home of east coast football, and I thought it was Australia. So, um, pretty good. Ooh. Oh, okay. I think I know what country this is in, or at least a few country options here. Well, I think I might know the continent, but. Yes, there's a lot of different countries that speak this language. Yeah. Well, I always get confused as well between Spanish and Portuguese. It's not always easy to uh, oh. <laughs> tell. Ah. All right. Okay. I, well, I'm making a guess. For now, I'm safe, it says. Whoa. Oh, wow, you got close. So M needs to guess quick. There we go. Wow. Oh, wow. It was on the border of, well, it was in uh, Argentina. See, yeah, I Argentina. thought it was Portuguese and it was Spanish, so. Shows. I thought it was Spanish, but I just picked the wrong Spanish-speaking country. <laughs> okay. Ooh, 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 I like this. I like this one. I got oh, a boy. good idea where this might be. There's a lot of signs, but there's such limited time to scroll. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I don't. Ah! <laughs> well, I'm making my guess and we'll see. Oh, no, I'm about 10,000 miles out, according to that. So. Oh, yeah, I think I'm about 10,000 as well. OK, now I know where it is. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, we lost Geomancer, I think, that time. You knew it was in New Zealand. That's pretty good. Well, no, I thought it was in Britain. I thought it was in Scotland. Oh. And then I'm like 10,000 miles out. And I'm like, OK, well, that can't be right. <laughs> oh. This is going to be an interesting one. Okay, time to burn up some gases, I think. Ooh, I think he's right. 29 kilometers closer than I am. Wow, he knows his geography. He does, but that doesn't mean that I'm not like 30 kilometers away. I could be really close and he could be yeah. a kilometer out. Oh no, he's... I'm going to stick with my guess, I think. Ooh. Oh, wow. A man. Is that in Jordan? Yes. Jordan. Wow, you're pretty close. We got some good geographers here. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Well. I said, if you don't know which way to go, go down hill, but it both seemed to be uphill from where we were. Yes. Okay, those trees look interesting. Red soil, it's very... Oh, I keep going backwards. Not that I, not that it's helping much to go forwards. Oh, heck. This is going to be another wild guess, I think. Oh, it must be a good wild guess. Oh, there you go. Whew. Oh, knocked out. Uh, 
That's okay. I made it for quite a while there. Australia. Yes. Yeah, I was in Africa for the longest time and thinking that's where it is. Hmm. But, ah. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, oh there's some signs. I found road signs. Oops. Ah, that way to the city, but it doesn't tell me which city. <laughs> Well, I think what way am I facing? Okay, so it's got to be north of town. So, oh no, I'm four thousand kilometers out. Oh no. I'm making some frantic guesses. <laughs> uh, I think I've lost. Oh. Uh, well, Singapore, wow. Wow. Nice one. There you go. I did not, I did not see that one coming. Well, yeah, I mean, if anyone else wants to keep playing, I'm, I'm good for that. I mean, I can sit here and play all day. Well, now that Dale's gone, I probably can. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Actually, the one, there's one other thing I wanted to do was there is a league. Now, where did I, where do you find the league? Oh, okay. Some, oh, wow. I've got a few more friend uh, requests. Okay. Let me go to my profile and uh, add you in. Look at all your friends there. I know. I didn't know I was so popular, eh? Now I've got to find. I keep adding geomancers to the group again and again for some reason. Uh, anyway. Okay, you should all be part of the group now. I had a league set up somewhere and let's go back to classic pro leagues. Okay. Okay, so are we ready for that game? Okay. Well, there's another link I wanted to share out. Uh, this is a link to a league table and basically with this one you get a different one every day and after four days whoever's got the most points is the winner and we'll probably find a prize for you for doing that as well so um, yeah please do uh, join this league table as well uh, and that's not a battle royale in the same way it's just a different uh, approach to playing it but yeah so one of the days is all around the world one of the days is famous landmarks. One of the days is FME partners. There's a map of those which I uh, have on there. So have a go at that league challenge as well sometime. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so did you want to join this battle, uh, Elizabeth? Yes, let me click in. And again, anyone else, anyone who wants to play, please do and um, but you can also start your own games and play by yourself and uh, play against each other you don't need me to start the games now you're all part of the group so uh, you're all good to uh, to go so um, okay well let's hit the start button then but yeah if you want to keep playing this morning against us I'm I'm all good with that go a sign. And it even tells you where it is, I think. I just, it's just when you've never heard of the place, it doesn't really yeah. help. No. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is a tough one. I'm feeling very lost here. 
And needless to say, you shouldn't be using Google, but to yes. search for place names, but I know people do, so. And there's a dog running around somewhere. Oops, I haven't ah. guessed yet. Uh, okay, I'm gonna guess there. Ooh, I'm 8,000 kilometers out, so I'm probably wrong. Ooh, a bit close. Oof. Oh. oh, Argentina? I was well out there. I was picking Spain at first. Yeah, I think I was definitely too far away there. Uh, she got through, so. All right. Okay, look Spanish again. That's interesting. A shopping basket on a pole with garbage in. I like that. That's interesting. Oh. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Okay, this is, I mean, it's definitely doesn't look like a tourist place. No. Precaucione. Precaucione. Okay, so that is not the name of the place. I'm certain of that. Okay, I'm going to have to guess because I'm going to go somewhere. Oh, I must be. Oh, you beat me. Wow. Wow. We were all pretty far off. We were, we were. Oh. Oh, interesting. Some writing on that truck. Oh, look, there. another doggy. Oh. Dash and sausage dog thing. <laughs> yeah. So you get to place names and the like, okay, but I've never heard of it, so. This looks like it could be anywhere to me. Okay, I've got an idea. So let's see. I don't know if Fog Donkey saw the same sign as I did and made the same guess. <laughs> Close to Warsaw, yeah. I saw a sign that said Warsaw. Oh, there you go. So, okay, so we're down to the last two, and uh, okay, we're looking straight at a sign. Oh, okay, so I know what city it's in straight away. Now. Wow. Let's see. I'm impressed. Do you know what country that city's in? Uh, I, I used to know someone from this country, from this city, in fact. So. Oh. Wow. Oh, you've got a guess. I've got a guess, don't I? Um, I'm trying to guess where it might be. I'm just going to take a random pick. If I can. Oh, you won. There we go. It was Mannheim. I saw a sign that said Mannheim. I'm like, oh, that's in Germany. But where is it? And I happen to see it on the map. So. Um... Perfect. Okay. Well, maybe we'll call it a day for now because I think we probably uh, had we had some fun there. 16 trusty players with us. <laughs> yeah, well, 16 people watching. So thank you for uh, sticking it out to the end. Yes. And again, please do play this. It's the uh, subscription I bought carries on until the end of October, more or less, like 28th or 29th of October. So uh, 
And if I see a lot of people playing, maybe we, we can extend it another month, we'll see. But um, yeah, thanks for playing. I hope the uh, random acts of transformation was interesting, even though we uh, <laughs> had to struggle over that first one. <laughs> I can't believe that that uh, coming up with an XML one straight out of the uh, out of the gate that was just incredible. So uh, anyway, um, yeah. Again, thank you for attending. Thank you for playing with us. Please do connect with us uh, online. Let's go back to that slide and say, yeah. Don't forget to sign up to the postcard exchange. Uh, you can find me on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, Twitch, I'm called Manitoba Mark, and we'll. We'll sort of stream stuff like this, like playing GeoGuessr, doing the random acts of transformation. I'll try and do it as well at different times that make it more uh, Europe friendly or Australian friendly and that sort of thing. So yeah, please do um, uh, join us and connect me on LinkedIn, get the badge for your webinars and uh, yeah. So, so thanks everyone. Yeah, anything from you, uh, Elizabeth? No, I think you covered it. And just a thank you to you as well. This was really fun. Yeah, excellent. Okay, well, thanks, folks. We'll, uh, we'll call it a day. Thanks, everyone. Bye.